Once upon a time, there was a sort of trend among those people that did visual basic programming, especially on YouTube, creating their own fake operating systems, commonly known as BBOSs. The origins of this trend are kinda unknown. The earliest example that I could find was a video from 2009 of some guy making a crappy pop-up panel that contained absolutely nothing. But the real first example of a VBOS was another video from 2009, which was about this Windows VP, the video has no likes and 5 dislikes. The comments were pretty negative because of its very simple interface, but for the time there wasn't anything like this, at least as far as I know. This Windows VP had applications like a notepad, a browser and even a bunch of games like Tic-Tac-Toe. There's another video from 2009 about Joins OS. This video is actually in Italian, which makes me proud of my country, a pioneer in the world of VBOSs. Eh. Anyway, this is one of those videos with the notepad and unfortunately no music. But at least it doesn't have that many dislikes. This OS is probably the very first one to have a dedicated installer. It was made with that old program called Install Creator, I recognize it. The desktop has icons for a lot of apps, a calculator, a file converter, not sure how well that worked, a screenshot tool, a painting program, an image viewer, a text-to-speech tool, a media player and much more. You could even set a custom background, how amazing! Between 2009 and 2011 a bunch of other VBOSs showed up, with their early YouTube aesthetics, and awful UIs like CloudM OS, JOS, Wing Dimension, Woemon OS and Blackspace. This is when stuff like System Info, System Settings, Sticky Notes, a Sidebar and .NET Bar 2 library were implemented for the first time. In late 2011, everything changed with Ango OS 1.0 Antares, released by Andres Gomez. This OS had a very well designed UI with fancy animations, especially when compared to all other VBOSs at the time, and generally some well done applications and features never seen before, such as multi desktop, transparency, and an actually decent terminal. Gomez was also working on another OS called Ango OS 2.0 Altair, which was teased in a video the next year, showcasing amazing features like a search bar, more customization and desktop widgets, but its development was never completed, so in late 2012 he decided to make an updated version of Antares called Antares B to update the apps and introduce some of the features that were originally intended for Altair, like widgets and a window tiling mode. Right after Antares, BBOSs started to become actually good, in part at least, and more and more people started developing their own OSs. For example, we have Elnis OS, which had a built-in file manager, Windows Galaxy, also known as Clunex 8, which was highly criticized for costing $10, the first time I've seen a paid VBOS, and Niron OS, which was one of the first to introduce a search web app. We're now in 2012, and later that year I started making my own VBOS series in Visual Basic 2010, my mini OS. At this time I had developed something like four versions, which weren't special at all. It looked like they were from 2009 and clearly rushed in less than an hour. None of these versions were ever publicly released or showcased online, although I had a YouTube channel with a bunch of trash videos made in Movie Maker. Man, I really miss those times. At this point in time, the most technically advanced attempt at a VBOS was Mattyware's Project OS, which shouldn't be considered as a VBOS because it was made in C Sharp but it's almost the same thing. This OS had a bunch of example apps that weren't part of the OS, but rather binaries that were compiled separately and integrated into the nested window interface, also known as MDI, of the OS on the fly. Another big feature was a dedicated file system inside an ISO file. Sounds complicated, but still quite impressive for something made in .NET. You can still get a copy of the source code if you look up his videos. Some other OS that tried to do something interesting was Landstar OS. It was an alternative shell other than an OS. It sat on top of Windows and it would start once the user logged in, offering a menu bar at the top of the screen, similar to Mac OS X. It wasn't anything more than an overlay and it was never publicly released, but it gave an interesting concept of a VBOS that would merge with a real OS like Windows. Even I tried to do something like this at some point, but it never became anything more than a very embryonic experiment. Another big revolution happened between 2012 and 2013, with Hexadecimal OS by Eblar slash Creations. 
It had a very professional and unique looking UI for the time and some nice applications that showed that Vision Basic wasn't so limited. It had a lock screen feature, a Wi-Fi hotspot app, a bunch of web apps, integration with cloud storage services such as Google Drive and Dropbox, a rudimentary notification system, a very advanced control panel with a built-in system updater, official documentation, a store to get new applications and a security app for some reason. It's not like there was any malware made for it. This OS would later evolve with updates that had both features and that also redesigned the interface. There still were some trash OS's that were very good for the time, like the first version of ANTF OpenOS, which was highly criticized for claiming that it was better than Exadesma. At least their OS's got better with time and ANTF is still kinda around to this day. Windows 7 Portable, which was a very crappy ripoff of Windows 7. Controller, which looked like a, a weird experiment from the very early days. Rack OS, which was a crappy ripoff of Windows 8, Mini OS by Alex, which was too simplistic, CTOS, ISO, CD or whatever had the same problem, and Vortex OS, which wasn't really that bad. It was one of the few OSs that made use of an NDI desktop, and it had some interesting features like a CPU usage meter, a calendar, and a compass. Oh, it's just a web browser. During 2014 I started coding again, this time with my new Windows 8 laptop and with Visual Studio 2012. I made tons of releases from version 3 to 13 that didn't seem to have any correlation between each other, since I always started from scratch for every release and they also weren't that good, just like the old ones from 2012. In late 2013 and early 2014 more good OS's were made like RocketX OS by a certain DS with its sorta touch friendly interface. Rocket XOS 2, which was completely redesigned with this interesting flat look. User Interface 1 by Tower Lives with its modern and nicely animated UI. Xeon OS by SRG Technologies, which started very simple but was later updated with a better UI and more apps. Barracuda X2 by Barracuda Tech, with a quite streamlined interface. And the XOS by ATC Traveling Time, a good friend of mine by the way which had a lot of high quality applications and features like widgets, desktop icons and a very well implemented store. This year, the Visual Basic Network was founded by a bunch of VOS and even PowerPoint OS developers. Yes, PowerPoint OS's were a thing. There were a lot of people posting stuff there, but around two years later it was closed because its owner could not manage it anymore, although you can still visit the old forum. Sometime in 2016, SRG Technologies founded the Visual Basic OS Network a new place where VB developers could discuss and showcase their work. I was even an admin there. The forum is still up to this day, but it's pretty much dead. We're now in 2015, when the popularity of VBOSs really started to reach its peak. We got CEOs by OpenText, now known as Deftware, which was open source and had features like an on-screen keyboard, an advanced terminal, and it would later evolve into Altair, with lots of good applications. Some crappy ones like Ace OS, Sorn OS and Faye OS. Some new updates to the XOS that redesigned the UI and added more features like a WMI terminal, an advanced file manager, a memos app and an alarm clock. And a Bubble OS 2.0 by Tutorial Basic, another friend of mine, with a user configuration screen for the first login, the use of a cool library called Material Skin, an advanced notification system, a lot of apps and even a blue screen of that. Yes, it's a feature. On January 2nd of this year, my mini OS 14 Whistler was released, and I'm going to describe my OS's in detail from now on because this was the very first release to be actually interesting, I think. It had an animated boot screen made with a crusty low resolution GIF, a thing that checked for updates at startup, highly unstable, an atrocious looking login screen and a vomiting using desktop. When it comes to the apps, I had a browser, a notepad, a media player, an image viewer, a file manager, and in this version I introduced two more apps, a store and a list of the apps downloaded from the store. I also introduced a sort of dock that holds minimized applications. Let's say that it wasn't pretty nor functional, it had a lot of bugs and not very well designed features. But why is this different from all previous releases, you might ask? I don't know either. I always felt like Whistler was a big step forward when compared to previous versions, but it could be just me. Later that year I released an update for Whistler, version 14.1, which was a simple facelift for the OS that made it look more like Mac OS X, which I wasn't a fan of back then, but whatever. But I also used for the first time the Material Skin library, although I probably used it for the start menu and a few buttons. I also added a feedback app and a deeply functional language setter. 
At the time, I was also working on a second update for Whistler, which I never finished, and also a touch-friendly version of my Mini OS that was cancelled in the very early stages of development. In mid-2015, I started to work on version 15 of my Mini OS, codenamed Xeon. This is when the My Mini OS logo got its first redesign refresh, inspired by Google's material design. This was the first time I made a bunch of public beta releases, three in total. The final build was released on August 31st. It had a login screen that looked not as bad as the one in the previous version. It was reminiscent of Windows XP and also of the latest version of the XOS. I had a lot of originality. The desktop layout was similar to the one in Whistler, but it had a much less awful look. The start menu and the apps were all redesigned using the material skin library, giving it a much more elegant look. I also added a notification system with a notification center, and I remade the store using the same code of the XOS store. ITC Traveling Time literally gave me the source code of some old build of the XOS so that I could just copy paste the code for the store. You could download a little app from the store called DevTools that told you how to create an app through the official SDK which was nothing more than a template project for Visual Studio. This OS was still not very stable or polished compared to others. In late 2015 I released something like 4 updates which didn't change much and I can't even remember most of the changes. Some of those were a new task manager app and a new boot animation. Right after that I started working on my Mini OS 16, Chocolate, planned for January 2nd, 2016. In this release I redesigned the login screen, moved the bar on the desktop to the bottom to better resemble Windows and added desktop icons, added notifications with a notification center, ported apps from Xeon with a few improvements and made the OS a bit more customizable. Again the overall stability was quite poor. Apps and particularly complex features would constantly break and stuff like the system folders recovery at startup would just try to run every time the user would boot the OS without actually doing anything. I really sucked at coding and testing my shit. This was also the year in which an Italian VB YouTuber called Xdragon System made a series of contests for VBOSs called BattleOS. My friends and many other Italian VB developers participated in the four editions it had, while I participated only in the second and the third editions. I came in fifth place the first time and in sixth place the second time, and Xdragon was particularly impressed with the UI I designed. That second time I actually participated with an updated version of my Mini OS Chocolate, version 16.1, released on June 29th. It had a new logo, a new installer, a new file explorer and a bunch of improvements to apps. Anyway, it's 2016 and we have the never released Alpha Cloud UI by Xavier Octavian, which looked like an interesting product. FluxOS 1.0 and 1.1 with its modern look and animations and very competent looking applications. Aspen OS by SRG Technologies, which had fancy animations and a first boot setup. FOS Albena by Future, which had a very nice looking OS inspired by macOS. Slayer OS Beta by MM Energy with its sleek interface and updates to the XOS that added drive icons on desktop, better notifications, better window management, improvements to apps like the file manager, and so on and updates to Bubble OS that improved the menu, a store, a task manager, a screenshot tool, window transparency and even a completely new Bubble OS Lite 3.0 with a new net installer, moddable icons, a new first setup phase, a bunch of new UI controls and windows completely made by Tutorial Basic, improved apps, notifications and animations, window thumbnails and more customization. We also have some crappy ones like Penguin Beta which looked like an awful PowerPoint mockup. CodeOS which looked bland and had a bunch of web apps and also an antivirus that probably didn't do much, View Quality OS which was too simplistic for 2016 and it also had disabled ratings, Fast Accessories which looked like a weird mess from 2012 and North OS Beta which was another too simplistic one but with a little bit of Android vibes which would become more relevant with later releases. We're heading into 2017 and we didn't get that many OSs this year. Just some crap like updates to North OS that, as I pointed out before, made it look a lot like Android, but with still nothing really special. Main OS, which was ugly and even stole the Kubuntu logo, but it still had some interesting features. FOS Elena with its cringy fake review scene that had improvements to various apps and a Windows 8 like start screen. Mi OS Watermelon by Love and Soft, which was based on Altair. It was open source and had a very nicely designed OS with lots of inspiration by macOS. And the last but definitely not the least, probably the most influential VBOS ever created. 
something with the most beautiful UI ever seen on a .NET software, something with an unmatched peak of quality and polish, something beautiful like Aurora's, powerful like nature, smart like a Tesla, fast like a tornado, probably the best VBOS in the world. Octoroid OS by Anura Gotta. When its first trailer came out, it obliterated everything that was done before, earning a mind-blowing total of 500,000 views. That's insane! It was the first time that a video has had a somewhat mainstream attention. This guy started all the way back in 2012 with B of FluxOS, not to be confused with that FluxOS, with a quite competent feature set for the time, but Octoroid was a big deal, so big that it would take me ages to showcase in detail. Just look Anurag's channel up on YouTube, and if you pay him $100, yes, I said that, you can even get the entire source code. After this boom, the world of BBOS has kinda... died? In 2018 we got a few good updates, like FutureOS Aurelia, so FOS was rebranded, that revamped the UI and added features like a search bar and a control center, FluxOS 2, which added a simple ID to create your own apps, multi-language support and a few overall improvements, and a new version of Aspen OS that revamped the UI with a mobile-friendly feel. Then we also got some crappy ones like Flower OS with its awful UI. After this period, some new OS's showed up, but they never became anything that would stand out like in the golden era. All of those creative visions of how people wanted an operating system to look like, how people wanted to experience computers in their own special ways, became a faint memory in the minds of all of those coders, even the ones that were very active, including Anuragotta, the king of video OS's. Even I gave up. In 2017, I started to create a new OS that would have been a big leap forward by reusing code from Mattyware's project OS, and that would have been completely different from any version of my mini OS that I made up to that point. Even the name was going to be different. But unfortunately, it never became a thing, since it was too difficult for me to develop. I also tried to make something together with my friends, but nothing came out of that either. That legacy still kinda lives on. For example, Dominic Hayes, the guy behind Ferren OS, actually started with coding VBOSs, so the meme of I wish there was a Linux distro that looked like that became real. We could say that this legacy still lives inside of me too, otherwise this video wouldn't exist and I wouldn't be making those DreamOS mockups. VBOSs might seem like a cheesy way to practice coding, especially nowadays where Visual Basic isn't really that popular anymore, but the passion that a lot of people like me put into those weird creations was genuinely strong. I hope that a trend like this could become a thing in the following years, maybe with some different software like Canvas, a cool Visual Basic clone for Linux, or even a game engine like Unity. And it doesn't have to be interactive, even you know, people carefully designing mockups like me could be a trend, spawning a new generation of creative ideas that could shape a new bright future. This is it for this video. I hope it wasn't super boring. All of this information was collected by digging into YouTube, my memory and some old files of mine. Part of it was also documented on the About Me page of my website, so I might not have mentioned some stuff. Let me know if I said some incorrect facts, or tell your story if you used to make PBOSs too. Thanks for watching.